Good afternoon, everyone. According to a research study done by the PEW Research Center in 2015, nearly 55% of the world's population follows one of the three Abrahamic religions. This includes Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. While these three religions are vastly different from each other, they do all trace their roots back to a common ancestor, a man named Abraham. Now, Abraham, along with his descendants Isaac and Jacob, they are collectively known as the Abrahamic Patriarchs, in which God used them to help establish the nation of Israel. Now, as a Christian who is a pastoral ministry major, it has been essential in my faith and my studies that I study in depth the history of my religion, which includes the history of the Patriarchs. So today I would like to inform you all of the history of the Abrahamic Patriarchs in relation to their expeditions, their daily life, as well as their religious beliefs. So let's go ahead and start with their expeditions. The Abrahamic Patriarchs and their travels all centers around the Promised Land, otherwise known as Canaan, in which God promised to give that land to their descendants. Now Canaan lies in between the Mediterranean Sea and the Dead Sea, which is modern day Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Israel. Our journey begins with a man named Abraham, who in the year 1871 BC, according to the Bible history timeline, was called by God to leave the land of Haran and to go into the land of Canaan. There Abraham dwelled and accumulated many possessions and wealth until his pending death in 1770, where he was buried in the land of Haran. Now Abraham's son Isaac inherited that promise from God, and he dwelt in the, in the land of Canaan up until his death in 1671. And then Isaac's son Jacob, who is the third patriarch, he ends up traveling the most of the three patriarchs. He inherits the promise from God, but this starts out by him traveling to Haran, where he accumulates most of his wealth and family and possessions, until God instructs him to go back to Canaan, and there he dwells until a famine drives him into the land of Egypt, up until his pending death in the year 1644, where he returns to Hebron, and he's buried alongside his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. Now, it's important to note that none of the three Abrahamic patriarchs inherited the land that God promised to them. However, they did get a glimpse of it throughout their times of living in Canaan, and they were essential to God's promise of carrying out his plan to give the land of Canaan to his descendants. So now that you know a little bit about the expeditions of the Abrahamic patriarchs, let's go ahead and look at what their daily life consisted of. So the patriarchs each had their own special occupation. Abraham, for example, was a nomadic shepherd. Isaac, he was somebody who loved hunting and wild game in nature. While Jacob, he was content living at home among the tents and tending to the flocks. However, Jacob was not the only one who lived among tents, because in fact, all three of the Abrahamic patriarchs, they lived in tents. Because of how much that God required them to travel, they lived in tents that were typically made of leather, felt, and wool, according to the Old Testament researcher Bob Stallman. Now, who lived with them among these tents? They did not have a family like you and I. They had these large families that were full of servants and people that they accumulated through their time of traveling. Abraham lived with his wife, Sarah, and his servants that he accumulated. Isaac lived with his wife, Rebecca, and his sons. And Jacob, he lived with everybody that Isaac and Abraham passed down him, in addition to his 12 sons, as well as his four wives. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what their religious beliefs were. So the Abrahamic patriarchs, they have a great history with their religious beliefs because they were unique that they had a monotheistic religion. Monotheistic just means that they believed in one God, and they referred to this God, according to Exodus 6.3, as El Shaddai, which is just a Hebrew word meaning God Almighty. Now this was unique to the Abrahamic patriarchs because 400 years later in the Mosaic period, God reveals his name to Moses and the Israelites as being Yahweh, which in Hebrew translated to English just means the Lord, and we know that name still stands today. There was another essential part of the patriarchs in their faith was that they believed in this reaffirming promise from God that God would lead their descendants into the promised land. The promise not only consisted of land, but also God's blessing, his protection, and that they would accumulate many descendants as numerous as the stars. And then circumcision, according to Millard and Wiseman in 1980, that ended up being the physical sign of the covenant between God and the patriarchs. 
In terms of rituals, the Abrahamic patriarchs, most of that was limited to just festivals, but they also used different sacrifices to atone for their sins. Um, they also loved to build altars wherever they were and they wanted to praise God. For example, Abraham, he built one in the, the land of Bethel, which is just north of Canaan. And the relationship that the patriarchs had with God was one that was direct through visions and dreams. They didn't have to have a priest or a prophet that interceded between them. They spoke directly with God and their relationship was personal. So today we talked about the great history of the Abrahamic patriarchs in relation to their expeditions, their daily life, as well as their religious beliefs. The patriarchs each had a unique relationship with God who made them promises of descendants, land, and his blessing. Through them, God was able to establish the nation of Israel, which is a sacred place to multiple religions today. Well, whether you agree with its doctrine or not, it is undeniable that the Abrahamic patriarchs were essential to the development of Christianity, which still stands as the largest monotheistic religion today. Thank you.